So now I'll talk a little bit, and I'll start at the beginning again, of what is happening in this poem and why it works so well this week. So in the beginning of the poem, we have this young speaker, and he has nothing with which to notch the growth of my work but the horizon, no language but the walks home. So we already have this desire for language in the young speaker. And we see that the poem is, is mostly enjammed, right? There's this kind of um, end line leading into the next. There's this flow and there's this movement. So when there are stops in the poem, it's really important to take note because these are really important moments that are happening. So I shook all the help from my young right hand could use from the sand-crusted kelp of distant literatures. So this idea of that there's, there's this, again, this desire for literature, this desire for word, um, and he's looking for it, but he can't find it. Um, and he sees this bird uh, up in the sky, plowing the fields of the surf, and we just have this young boy on on the water, right? And the sand is slippery. The sand that the the earth he's on is the, there's slippage, and then he looks out into the sea. My deepest wish in the swaying words of the sea and the skeletal fish of that boy is ribbed in me. So this, this desire, this desire for language, this desire for voice, but also this like n lack of satisfaction with what he has around him. And then we have the but. But I sat, anytime you see but in a poem, you should pay attention. Um, the imperial palms curled their fronds into questions over Latin exams. So we have this kind of imperial nature coming over this Latin exam when he is in school. 